Good day, beautiful people, and welcome back to Life Treasures and Golden Moments. Today, I would like to dedicate this special podcast to all veterans in honor of their service to us. Before I get started with my special story of the day, I'd like to share a few facts with you about Veterans Day for people that are unaware of exactly what it is. And sometimes I get confused with the Memorial Day. So I'd like to share these facts with you today. Veterans Day originated as Armistice Day on November 11, 1919, the first anniversary of the end of World War I. Congress passed a resolution in 1926 for an annual observance, and on November 11, it became a national holiday beginning in 1938. Unlike Memorial Day, Veteran Days pays tribute to all American veterans, living or dead, but especially gives thanks to living veterans who served their country honorably during the war or peacetime. Veterans Day occurs on November 11th every year in the United States in honor of the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month of 1918 that signaled the end of World War I, which at that time was known as Armistice Day. In 1954, President Dwight D. Eisenhower originally changed the name of the holiday from Armistice Day to Veterans Day. In 1968, the Uniform Holidays Bill was passed by Congress, which moved to the celebration of Veterans Day to the fourth Monday in October. The law went into effect in 1971, but in 1975, President General Ford returned Veterans Day to November 11th due to the important historical significance of that date. Mm -hmm. Veterans Day commemorates veterans of all wars. And this is an interesting fact here. Great Britain, France, Australia, and Canada also commemorate the veterans of World War I and World War II on or near November 11th. Canada has Remembrance Day, while Britain has Remembrance Sunday, the second Sunday of November. In Europe, Great Britain, and the Commonwealth countries, it is common to observe two minutes of silence at 11 a.m. every November 11th. Every Veterans Day and Memorial Day, Arlington National Cemetery holds an annual memorial service. The cemetery is home to the graves of over 400,000 people, most of whom have served in the military. I'd like to give you now a little bit of background um, of who our veterans of today are. The military men and women who serve and protect the United States of America come from all walks of life. They are parents, children, grandparents, friends, neighbors, and co-workers, and are an important part of their communities. Here are some facts about the veteran population of the United States. 18.2 18.2 million living veterans served during at least one war as of 2018. 9% of veterans are women. 7 million veterans served during the, world, uh, during the Vietnam War. 3 million veterans have served and supported the war on terrorism. Of the 16 million Americans who served during World War II, about 325,000 were still alive as of 2020. Two million veterans served during the Korean War. As of 2019, the top three states with the highest percentage of veterans were Virginia, Wyoming, and Alaska. I hope you enjoyed that bit of history. Uh, to refresh our memories, you know, way back in high school, we learned some of that, and uh, for the younger people today. As said by General Norman Swatchoff, it doesn't take a hero to order men into battle. It takes a hero to be one of those men that goes into battle. The story today is called The Cap, and it was authored by Nancy Horton. About 15 years ago, I happened upon a catalog that sold military clothing, medals, and other related memorabilia. On a whim, I bought my father a World War II cap. At the time, I didn't realize how this inexpensive hat would provide comfort to him in the most challenging and solitary time of his life, after my mother passed away 19 days before their 60th wedding anniversary. 
My parents were World War II sweethearts. They married in June of 1942, and my father began his World War II journey just three months later at the age of 21. My parents were each other's sidekicks. Although our family is very close and we all live in the same general vicinity, Dad was forced to do some things on his own. One of those things was going out to breakfast at the local diner by himself. The World War II cat became a conversation piece, a reason for a handshake, a wave, a nod, a salute, a tip of a hat, a simple yet sincere thank you, eyes meeting eyes, shared silence, and so much more. The hat has allowed strangers to have a reason to approach my father. Instead of my dad feeling lonely or lost in his thoughts, that hat has allowed him to know that he is appreciated. In many instances, instead of sitting alone, a complete stranger pulls up a chair and sits across from my father. They share war stories over a cup of coffee or talk about uh, their loved ones who served or who are currently serving. Many of these strangers are young people in their 20s and 30s who want to hear the accounts of World War II firsthand. How many years are left to hear these stories from the greatest generation to have ever lived? I'm writing this story just three hours after going out to breakfast with my dad. A young man appeared at our table, looking directly into my dad's eyes, and gave him a firm handshake. Not a single word was exchanged, but the young man's eyes told a story. He was saying thank you in his own way. Silence, but I could tell that something my father was a link to a time of a person this man's life. I didn't have a chance to say thank you to the man of coming over, and anyway, it felt like a sacred moment, not to be interrupted by words. My dad has been honored for his World War II service many times at this little diner a few miles from home. Dad will go to pay his check and be told that someone took care of it, or a note will appear thanking him for his service. Once a small child walked over to his table with crayons and a drawing of the American flag. During these times, my father doesn't feel alone. One time in particular, my father met a group of young men who were pilots and performed stunt shows in the Atlantic City, New Jersey area. They had stopped at the diner on their way to a show and noticed my father sitting at the table. They asked questions and they listened as he shared stories from the war. My father told them about his great-grandson, who he aspires to be a pilot one day. These young pilots got my father's address, and a few days later stopped over at his house with all sorts of autographed pictures, pens, and words of encouragement for Tyler to follow his dream. This past summer, a friend of the family ran into my dad. Our friend is a photographer for a program called The Warriors Watch Riders. This organization consists of a group of men and women, many veterans themselves, on motorcycles who greet soldiers returning from duty. The Warrior Watch Riders escort the soldiers to their homes. For those who have served in the past, they share a picture, a mug, and a hug. Our family friend put the word out to the Warrior war- war- Riders. And 10 days later, 30 motorcycles roared down my street. Warrior watch riders, along with their friends and family, took time out of their lives to honor the veterans who are so precious to me. My father, my uncle, a close friend, all the World War II veterans, my two brothers, Vietnam veterans, and my son-in-law, an Iraq veteran, who were all acknowledged. This occurred the weekend just after the July 4th a weekend when most adults are lounging by the pool or heading to the Jersey Shore. Many of the warriors crossed the bridges from Pennsylvania to surprise three men in their 90s who fought in a war more than 73 years ago. The old men tried valiantly to hide their tears. In the past 15 years, I have learned so much about my dad. The cap has allowed me to listen in on conversations, and I learned that my father served 28 months that he flew 155 missions over the hump, pushing supplies out of the back of a plane when the co-pilot gave the signal. He volunteered for this mission because it paid 50% more. 
Over 1,000 planes were lost trying to complete the mission. So if you happen to read this or hear about this story today, you are the 30th young man who shook my dad's hand today. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you to the tiny children who walk over and say, thanks, I draw a picture on their placemats. Thank you to the youth who are inspired to learn about this generation. Thank you to the adults who have served and who have not been recognized nearly enough. How can anyone ever thank a man or a woman who was drafted or enlisted in a war? You put your life on hold, and it takes years to build your life back when you return. Please look for those caps and muster up the courage to go over and say hello. My dad is lucky. He has generations of family members in his life. But for some of those men and women, you may be the only person they talk to on a particular day. Search for those caps. Thank you to our author, Nancy Norton, today. What a beautiful story and a beautiful thought and a beautiful reminder that we must give thanks to our men and women in the service that protect this country and let them know that they are appreciated. God bless America, ladies and gentlemen, and may you all have a beautiful day. Until next time, this is Natalie Silver with Life Treasures and Golden Moments. What is courage? What is honor? Are these words or just ideals long forgotten? What is duty? What is glory? Are they just written down in some old